Person just home says you ask and this is how well does Dark Tide do Warhammer? Well, it's channel Bricky. So the first video of this, uh, I guess it was a week or so ago, uh, the Bricky made about the game Dark Tide, which was epic video. Uh, doesn't matter how much you know you watch other videos, Bricky always has a way to, I guess you know, shed a light on something because that video was epic. Uh, you know, all the elements of the game, <laughs> all the dialogues and shit, I didn't know about, right? So I guess that was how game works type of video, like how game is fun, right? How can you know? How can there be four, you know fourth wall breaking dialogues, this and that, especially with the psychers, if I remember correctly. And this is gonna be about how well does it do with the lore, judging by the title. How well does Dark Tide do Warhammer? Uh, I think it's gonna be good enough because so far everything I've seen kind of feels like okay. I think it's gonna be somewhat lore accurate. I don't know hundred percent, but yeah, that's why this video is gonna be fun. Let's watch it. Hello everybody, my name is Bricky, currently liberating the entirety of Atoma Prime by providing them with the newest in cleaning technology, bar soap. So Dark Tide sponsored my last video and that, that was really awesome of them. It's nice to be noticed by, by the hammers that make war. Dark Tide then said, You wanna see me do it again? Today's video is also sponsored by Dark Tide. Four players, Shouty, Sparkhead, Sa, and Slab come together for a fantastic Nurgle based co op experience of survival and death. Tons of missions, tons of weapons, tons of armor, and tons of faith await you in Tertium. Down in the description is the Grimoire of Nurgle, and blessed be the number seven. So if you click it, you can then join in on this fun. Where my prior video was a discussion mainly on how to play the game. Mm. Today, I'd like to ask the question, how well does Dark Tide do Warhammer? What I mean by this is, how well does the game adapt the source material into video game form? The Warhammer yeah. universe is an extremely unique and complicated one, and properly adapting it is difficult even at the best. Because that is really important, right? I mean, Witcher games really captured. I mean, obviously, there's still going to be, you know, hardcore novel, you know, novelists, basically, whatever you call them readers who just you know say like okay game does not capture uh, witcher thing perfectly or whatever but if you see netflix witcher series then you start to appreciate game even more lore wise at least <laughs> so that puts a perspective so in that way obviously there's always going to be something that people like got a hardcore you know uh, warmer lore people would uh, you know say like okay this doesn't do well but yeah if it captures the main core thing or feel of it like direction of it is good enough of times. Most of the factions in the universe take from modern day cultures or customs and then either give them a little spin on it or adapt it <laughs> yeah. in some way. For example, the Necrons are a robotic Terminator vibe to begin with, and then they're, they're blossomed up into an army of the undead mixed with a heavy Egyptian culture. The Adeptus Mechanicus are a combination of extreme steampunk. Like, I don't know about Necrons being Terminator vibe, because Terminator is supposed to be uh, humans created these machines that is just so badass and futuristic and crap like that, if I remember correctly. Well, Necrons just like, you know, metal is better than the flesh, so, you know, they were made metal husks, by, you know, by the Catans, right? And now they have the power of the gods, Egyptian, this and that, kind of punk mixed with like a monk culture mixing yeah. aspects from like tibetan monks with, with technophile extremism That's awesome, right? very weird the craft world elder take after a more feudal japanese culture tau a bit more of a sci-fi version jukari are pirates tier i thought it was more uh, you know tolkien's elven culture mixed into that right elders i mean i, I think that applies to all the elders right jukari's craft world but yeah, also a bit of samurai crap. It's like a Lovecraft and Xenomorph mixture, yeah. and orcs are football fans. <laughs> For humanity, it's a combination <laughs> of a fascist Big Brother style regime mixed with this kind of like. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Rob Gronkowski even sounds like orc, right? So yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> Witch seeking cult and a bit of retro sci fi like you see in the movies like Alien and of course a ton of gothic. Luckily yeah. for Dark Tide, that's really the main thing they need to focus on humanity. Because I, I couldn't imagine what it would be like to have to juggle all the other factions along with them. But Warhammer games live and die on four major components art direction, voice acting, music, and power scaling in that order, most important to least. Let's start with art direction. With this tool, I shall give birth to art! In order to pull off the Imperium's aesthetic, everything needs to look like a massive factory 
and a church simultaneously. It needs to have mm. skulls and parchment paper absolutely everywhere. For the most part, I'd say they pull this off with flying colors. Walking yeah. around the Morning Star shows this off quite well. The entire place looks like you're on the inside of a monolithic church with the statues of imperial heroes and the architecture of things like even just the windows but within that church yeah i guess you know before all the regulation kicked in the industrial revolution when it kicked off right you see those images of london where everything looks like kind of like you know uh, depressive environment everything smoke everything's machine it feels like there is not a single regulatory body that you know regulates all of this Right, it just blown out of proportion. I guess if you amplify that to a million, that kind of feels like a depressing, warmer world with machines, factories, and whatever. But yeah, with a you know a hint of a church here and there, because yeah, why not? It feels like a military station, like a church itself is going to war, which is pretty accurate. The cable management yeah. here makes me want to dry heave. It just goes and goes and goes, circling around metal and steel in an infinite loop. And dangerously <laughs> close to those Anybody? cables are candles. <laughs> and by the throne, there are so many candles. Now we mix those candles with parchment and purity seals, which we are just absolutely covered in. The purity seals are, by the way, those little wax seals and pieces of parchment you see everywhere. They are inscribed with holy duties, prayers, scripture, all kinds of blessings that are supposed to resemble a lack of chaos taint or just duty to the god emperor. As you can tell, they kind of go hand with this stuff. Also, side note, side note, the ship, ship, it's called the Morning Star, which first harkens to the medieval mm. weapon, right? The big Morning Star. But then you realize it's spelled Morning Star. Oh, as Morning Star. Morning the Dead plus Star, spaceships, the Morning Star. It's a pretty good ship name. Now there's always yeah. a possible worry about lack of skulls. There needs to be enough skulls. This game does not have a lack of skulls. In Warhammer, AI is illegal. <laughs> So all mechanisms require a human brain robotized and reprogrammed in order to operate among a few other things. This is why we have servo skulls flying around. They're little, you know, servant skulls. The classic line like hands. Are we the baddies? Well, you should absolutely be thinking that the entire time playing the game. And I think they met their skull <laughs> quota quite well. As for each- <laughs> Who's the bad? I love that. You know, remember getting into Warhammer, first question of mine was, who's the, are we the bad guy? Who's the bad guy? And people overwhelmingly say in the comment, we don't do that here. <laughs> we don't do the bad guys and good guys thing here. All right. I guess it kind of makes sense. When it's about survival, morality doesn't feel redundant at some point. Are we the bad guy? Sure. Is the person we're fighting the bad guy? Why not? It's all about survival at this point. <laughs> it's like lion and tiger fighting each other. Who's the bad guy? Who knows? To the classes, the guardsman looks pretty right. I'd say you could maybe 40s them up a tiny bit more. Maybe a few hanging baubles here and there, like a tiny little incense jar or an aquila here or there. But the guardsman's a hard one since depending on where you come from, their, mm. their culture can vary substantially. So it really depends on what you're trying to go for. The Zella is pretty on point. I really have no The yeah, first time I heard about, you know, Bricky explaining that about, you know, all the common Astron Militarum, common soldiers. I just imagine them all being the same for some reason. I don't know. I just felt like that's how hardcore Warhammer culture is, that everything is same apparently. There is no you know, differences in culture because everything is based on the one thing, right? One chain of command, emperors, everything, everybody, everything else doesn't matter. So I just thought that everything is going to be a copy of it. So there's a horde of, like I said, like a hundred million soldiers coming. They're all going to be somewhat same. But apparently that's not the case, right? I mean, obviously it's not the case. Uh, planets can be, you know, immensely distanced with, with each other. They can look completely different. They can have culture that is completely different. Even the Primarchs culture are different. So that was a surprise. So all the soldiers can be incredibly different from one, one another, I guess. There, that's kind of perfect. When I think of a zealot, I, yeah, that's about right. The Psyker is good, <laughs> but I wish the actual character could have a bit more mutations we see the oh. navigator class the new rogue trader game they're pretty mutated compared to the normal humans the psyker does have, I have a few options right like strange stuff you can do with their eyes like pitch black but i would have liked maybe just a, a bit more weird bits added yeah, to it makes really sense spice man spice up that creepy factor unsanctioned psychers are corrupted by you know, not corrupted by changed by the warp and manipulation of the warp should change your physical appearance right he's right it just you can't just make them look a bit like oh look at that he's a different person no that's not how it works oh, look at 
with that he's like a you know a goth person or something no that doesn't work it's it's supposed to have all the features and certain things you know mutated or something i don't know it just that's what you you know visualize when you think of a psyker sometimes like the fucking exorcist girl so adding a bit more would be pretty dope. yeah ogrins are are nearly perfect like when i first started playing this game i was going to comment that the ones in the game were were way too smart ogrins ab humans what that mean is it insult better not be insult but then they mention the bonehead ship they have yeah a metal machine yeah but I'm okay. Which I have to commend because I was totally okay with saying, yeah, they're way too smart for normal ogrins, but video game, you want them yeah. to talk with the quad mates, like I'm okay with that. But but they literally thought of something. I didn't even have to use that excuse. Like, bravo! Because yeah, ogrins are normally just complete infants. Like what? They actually thought of it with the bone in. You know what? I don't know post much, but you know what the fucked up thing about the gaming industry has become that we expecting them to be you know somewhat committed to what they're doing that feels like a commendable thing even though that should be the norm right i mean oh okay it's a game so i'll let it pass otherwise they shouldn't be smart no what they did everyone's supposed to be doing if they're making this like okay they're not supposed to be smart but we need this dialogue exchange what are we going to do oh fuck it let's give them a chip everyone should be doing that anybody who doesn't do something like that is just lazy and half-assing but that's how the game industry is now apparently shit that's mm. Mm. Finally, when it comes to, to Nurgle, I'd say it hits about 80% of the way. From gameplay purposes, it definitely is a bit too generic zombie at times. Not to mention yeah. the amount of dude with guns they rely on. But we are definitely fighting a more Nurgle corrupted hive city as opposed to fighting Nurgle's demons. So this oh, is me okay. makes sense. But I think I could do with a bit more horror. That gigantic tree with the eyes and the horrifying faces are, are perfect. And the beast of Nurgle is pretty disgusting too. I would have liked maybe some plague bearers oh. as an enemy or a plague drone instead of the plague ogrim. That being said, I think Nurgle was the strongest choice for enemy in this kind of game. I'd kill for a Zinch or a Slanesh style, but that would be really hard to do well. I don't know how you'd pull off a Zinch Horde game or a Slanesh Horde game without getting a, a much more than M-rated game. Nurgle, yeah, for the most part, is pretty excellent. <laughs> I do want a little bit more Nurgle demons and stuff, but I also need to temper my expectations because I want to see all the things. But as far as art direction goes, this game might be the strongest. You have a solid case, that Battlefleet Gothic 2 in the case. Yeah, I mean, that is true, right? I mean, uh, Slanesh one is definitely the one. That would definitely get higher rated, even if you be careful yeah the just the animation alone just how they look <laughs> would be enough to be problematic uh or a corn one that's just the game doom right if you play doom you can just imagine like you're fighting the horde of corn basically lots of metal music and there you go kill 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 Canicus might give it a run for its money, but it's a damn hard run. But it's not surprising since like the success of Vermin Tide goes a long way. But it's still real treasure to see. Now, second on our list is voice acting. <laughs> It's gonna be great. Proper 40k voice acting is probably a combination of incredibly fun to do and terrible on the voice. I am judgment! It also forces you into the frightening realm of, um, British accents. Another set of useless bloody orders from <laughs> some useless bloody carcass. Like most of humanity has that British accent since, you know, Games Workshop is a British company and they have been a fan of that old hobby called colonization. Though there are a ton of accents for the most part, it's just British is the standard. As for the voice acting itself, fervor is the most important aspect. You need to say your lines with your chest. The ability to really sell that, yes, this person believes what they are saying is, is the the needle point there. You know when an actor becomes so large, you stop seeing the character they're playing and instead start seeing the actor only? Like I had this issue with Leonardo DiCaprio, yeah. I can only ever see him as that. Warhammer has no room for that. You must become the character. You must see yourself in this bizarre world and every line must be delivered with that pinpoint accuracy. For the veteran, I give him like a solid B plus. Yeah, I mean, uh, in the Django Unchained, right? I think, uh... Django's German friend, uh, what was his name? I forgot his name, that great actor. But I think DiCaprio was supposed to play that, or DiCaprio wanted to play that, but you know, I guess Tandino just said no. And I kind of see that because he was supposed to be a supporting character to, you know, 
uh, Django at that point, right? So if if it was Leonardo DiCaprio, it would be so dominating character. You just see Leonardo DiCaprio, it feel weird. So that's why it was good that he was played as that you know whatever southern landowner whatever that was. Guardsmen are a bit difficult since they're the everyman sometimes, so it's occasionally hard to do it properly and dissolve into that character. But I think this is as close as we're gonna get with the packs we have. The professional has a clean cut accent. This is life in a hive city. I'll stick with the guard. Give my fragging right arm to see the golden throne. Just one skill lot wouldn't last a day in the guard. Oh, take it up your arm. Nice shot. The loose cannon definitely <laughs> adds a, a bit more comic relief. Help me get even with our pilot, would you? Uh. Took me for everything, and now I have to. Oh no, you don't need to know. But the standout for me is the cutthroat from Cadia. He has that poisonous speech that comes from someone who's just really fucking pissed off all the goddamn time. And that is how I imagine Cadians probably feel right now. The tech priest is creepy. She knows the stuff. If I start speaking in ones and zeros, put me down here. Okay. okay. You wouldn't have lasted a day on Cadia. Is that right? And, uh, Very Irish then. working out for Cadia right now. You shut your mouth. I'll shut it for you. Yeah, there you go. You'll come apart at the last moment, just like Cadia. The Zealot. Oh my God, the Zealots. Oh, they achieve a standout A++ extra credit with their voice lines. They have absolutely nailed it. If okay. in doubt, kindred, place your faith in fire. The hotter, the better. All six sound fantastic. Yeah. I love how they went with different types of piety for them. They range between all kinds of emotions. They had a like dorky Bible study priest. What unfathomable might hath the master of mankind? That he unites a million worlds beneath his banner. The holy Damn. and thou attitude, and of course, like the judge. You from who has the emperor's <laughs> light in their lungs. <laughs> the VA work here Almost is had a brilliant, ever. no complaints. As for the Psyker, it can be a bit hit or miss. However, I wouldn't say the hit or miss comes from the performance, but rather the actual voice lines being said. The crazy shrill loner lady and also the insane German Psyker say some, mmm, some heretical things. The Emperor survives on human flesh and human lust. His Imperium likewise. What is Indomitus Crusade? Is a glorious attempt by Lord Gulliman to unite the Master's realm across the scar of chaos. The length some would go to in order to earn a parade. What the fuck? Honest to God, honest to God, Emperor, they would have been just gone significantly sooner. Just like, hey, what's up, everyone? It's me, Psyker, you know, the Carrion Emperor, and then. What? But some yeah, do that's what I was saying. That hybrid of terror. And it just did say that in the previous video, right? Like, how are the somebody's not just shooting them, right? Like, they're saying some radical things. <laughs> Fyingly scary and funny at the same time. They don't have outright poltergeist, which is too bad, despite understanding why they wouldn't. But it's too bad. I would have loved that. Though I think the standout here might actually be the one that constantly talks about the emperor as his beloved. At least the emperor's wiggle. You hear that, beloved? He's talking about you. I can teach you my secret language if you like. It has 15 vowels. Oh, I do enjoy your company. I wish you were all real. Feel free to wake up any time and spit us your company. I think that's just the right mix of kooky crazy, but still lucid and understanding. Though the, the female- <laughs> I'm imagining text to speech device emperor just coming back to life. All right, who the fuck is that name bot? Give me that bot, where is it? Vaunt one. I do think adds the right amount of classic damaged mage. You should be more careful with those stray thoughts. I might get offended. Please, sibling, have some professional courtesy. I grant you that. It's called skill, Zealot. Finally, the Ogren is just great. It's perfect. Most people go with the, the angry, like, bottom eight Xenos one, and I couldn't be happier. 
All three versions are wonderful. They all have good voice lines, but just, I love that one a lot. It's so fun. It's so like dorky and just having a good time. Ogren man. I'll keep this short because the Ogren wouldn't understand me anyway. Good, good job, big man. Just Mm. The supporting cast is the only group I feel could use a bit more oomph with them. Sergeant Major Moro guy, is he's pretty on point. I think he does quite well, but Explicator Zola and the pilot feel not bad, just, just there. They're there to serve their function and not much more. And I think they could use a bit more oomph in some of their delivery. I like Hadron a lot, though, a lot. Uh, I, Despite the fact that she has this, like, gilf energy to her, I maybe would have preferred her a bit more robotic and a bit more talking like this kind of way but then we wouldn't get the sass and i like the sass all this for a few lehman russes doesn't seem worth it i tell you what is harder better good good or bad Am I saying that right? Good to understand. Still, the main <laughs> ensemble of characters is really damn good. And a combination of all four, I think, is the best group. You know, it kind of makes you think of Ed and Eddie. You know, I mean, that's only three, but like Ed is the Ogren, Double D is the Psyker, and Eddie is the Guardsman. Throw a Zealot in there. God, it's Cartoon been Network's million years since I watched that Guardsman. best show. I will not hear otherwise. Who would win? The Chaos Gods or Ed with a rock in his shoe? Okay. Music. Is mayonnaise an instrument? No, Patrick, mayonnaise is not an instrument. So 40K is quite gothic, as I said. But since it's a gothic sci-fi hybrid, soundtracks need to fuse that old with the new. Normally they do this by mixing organ music with either a more modern beat or electronic instruments. Warhammer music varies, but it often has to feel like it's a tale being told. For example, in Dawn of War II, the Space Marines had, had a triumphant, heroic theme that really expressed the, the feeling of like a victorious saga being told. Whereas something like mechanic. <laughs> I'm imagining all these characters from Dark Tide or Psychers and everything just standing at the side. All the <laughs> this start is walking slowly with that music and everybody's just like, what a douchebags. <laughs> Kiss is, is a bit more inquisitive, you know? Still classic, so to speak, but they basically got gothic dubstep. Oh, yeah. I love the music of this Mechanicus game, man. Because, you know, they're machines, so yeah. Electric machines, I don't Dark Tide has decided to go the organ route. Though it seems like it's more like organ club music. Like the kind of music you'd expect to hear in a big city that is also heavily gothic, at least during its combat themes, which are excellent. It's Adam's family. Yeah, there you go. Alright, alright. Light stride, perfect name. I like this one. It's Mr. very Jesper chill. Kaid, kid that has done an enviable job creating not Jesper only Kaid made this holy shit, he's a really good man. He's way too many games I remember him making music of. Jesper Kaid is really incredible. I mean Hitman, you know, old Hitmans and whatever. I don't know if he made the newer Hitman music or not. Yeah, he makes really good songs. Great man. soundtracks that are good on their own, but also fit in universe. A ton of choir mixed with the organs, mixed with the strings, and great inserts of electronic combinations add a ton to it. It's a rarity that you can take the theme, like Night Strider, which is played in the Psyker character trailer, and have it fit in a 40k game, despite it feeling like a badass 8-bit remix theme. Just for cat is good. I'm gonna like. It. This is gonna be great. Able to fit that kind of soundtrack in this game is a testament. It hits all the right beats, one after the other. They even found a way to sneak in the Skaven fiddle in just a little bit of the background of the main theme, which is also a banger. The 
The only tracks I'm not huge on are probably the ones where an abomination is present, especially the Beast of Nurgle one. It's a bit grating on the ears on the higher difficulties, which take a ton of time to kill the damn thing. But then on the other side of the spectrum, that boss music, though. Damn. <laughs> There's a bit of an honorable mention for sound design in this game, which does play a big part in it. But I don't include it much because what one company thinks a last gun sounds like can be wildly different than what another company thinks it does. And both often sound good, but there is no dedicated last gun sound. So, you know, it's kind of hard to rate sound effects in a 40. Yeah, I blame GW, right? They, but they have to, you know, I guess, I mean, that the lore is so big from tabletops to games to God knows what. Uh, they should just, uh, you know, put out some sound or some clips or something like this. is how a last gun sound like. This is how a certain person sound like. Just to set a tone uh, lore-wise, basically. K game. As long as they sound good, because, I mean, they don't worry, they sound fine. <laughs> Lastly, but not least, we can talk about power That's speed. kind of realistic oh, for a laser gun, though. Sound. <laughs> Power scaling is very important. The level of power from something like an orc grot to a guardsman to an Eldar ranger, then a space marine, then a Necron destroyer, then a chaos possessed, then a custodian, and we haven't even talked vehicles or demons yet. Like the differences from low. Yeah, I mean, if if you don't do power scaling, like you don't explain that in Warhammer, what are you doing? What's the point of the game? Right? That's everything. <laughs> That's the first thing I do every time. Oh, look at that! How powerful is custody? How powerful is a Primark? Okay. <laughs> to high are ludicrous and then you have to deal with who's writing the book or game and that and that takes a lot of effort to get properly correct as far as this game is concerned i think the amount of restraint should be commended some things are not perfectly in tune with the lore mainly the influence of nurgle i mean the mere existence of us in this hive city we should be firing out of both ends but considering our characters the enemies we fight on an individual level it's pretty accurate the issue comes from which character you play like the veteran and zealot are the weakest in universe yeah it's completely accurate somewhat at least to take on a bunch of pox walkers or guardsmen and come out the victor hell even some of the specials that's completely fine if we are to assume that our reject is you know special you know, main character special then for the most part the things we fight the yeah look with the zealots i've, I've said like it doesn't make sense realistically like how they have defenses of when they melee rather than having damage up because they are fanatic and defense is actually down because there's so much of armor defending them and people said like okay that's not it's not how it works and this kind of makes sense to me i'm talking about realism in this warmer universe which is like okay people are fueled by psychic power and god no, god knows what so it kind of makes sense like something makes i mean i can imagine having them having like you know really really bad wound because they're such a fanatic that they st still go on and there's the last second where the body stops functioning. I can kind of imagine that. So it kind of makes sense like how they're sturdier up until the end point. Uh, because the pain doesn't stop them because they're fanatics. Kind of makes sense. Regular enemies? Totally okay. Where things get a bit tougher is when we start dealing with the higher level enemies like the mutants and especially the abominations like the plague ogren, the beasts of Nurgle. There, our ogren and psyker friend come in handy. Psykers are weird. These are those spatial bosses, right? Like if you don't touch them, they're just there, right? I guess I've pl played certain games that have this kind of element. Like they're really powerful, somewhat OP sometimes kind of things that if you don't touch it, don't mess with it, just walk away and it's all fine. But if you fuck with it, there you go, this boss you have to fight. That's that's a good element they added. Weird, though, in a sense, because they can either be insane wizards with unimaginable power or completely uncontrollable madmen. In fact, they can easily be a detriment to your team. In game, if they perils, they explode and get downed. In universe, if they perils, then a beast of Nurgle grows out of their body and kills us all. But that's a game thing, and I don't mind that at all. Still, the, the mere capability of one on the team ups our survival rating a decent amount. And the Ogren, oh my god, even more so. An Ogren oh, he throws a grenade box. They could probably beat up some space marines in a 1v1 fight. Like, no guns, no weapons, like just like two people in the ring. I'd say they could probably do it. It's a little bit of like a David and Goliath. <laughs> Calling a space marine David. <laughs> it's a bit of a David. Can they throw? I mean, there's a mutator giant, sure. But the space marines are literal made from the seeds of Primax, which are made from the seeds of Emperor himself. Aren't they supposed to be pound for pound, even just way too powerful? 
Like even if they're eight foot tall, massive machine, they're supp- they're equivalent to some somebody who's like twelve foot tall or something, averagely because they're that badass. And uh, you know, it's like uh, you know, I get it that they're bigger and strong, but but you know, a stud is gonna be extremely smarter, right? They can counteract and just slam them down. It's like big source is Brock Lesnar in WWE or something, right? I mean, there's a clear difference, but come on, we know who would kick whose ass and Goliath thing, but they are large enough to do so. The thing is, in actual lore, Space Marines are too smart. They'll kill them from a distance and they'll have knives and stuff. So <laughs> there Strangle is them. But, but even so, <laughs> I'm going on a tangent. The Ogren ups <laughs> us massively. The power of an Ogren, the actual genuine strength of an Ogren should not be underestimated. They will rip you in half like a wishbone. They are gigantic. As far as the enemies go, the Beast of Nurgle is a really weird creature to exist though. It, it's straight up a demonic entity which cannot exist on its own. See, in 40k, demons don't have like a form in real space. They can only exist in the warp. So in order for a demon to exist here, there has to be some level of rip in the real space that feeds it life. Or I guess it could have possessed something, sure, but that seems a bit less likely considering that we also have the Plague Ogren, which was possessed, obviously. But if I'm correct in this theory, it means somewhere, something in Tertium is feeding warp energy into real space. And that's a massive fucking problem that may or may not be dealt Oh yeah, makes sense kind of, like if there's not a rip that, you know, opens a warp energy somehow into it. I mean, these creatures from the warp cannot exist like that. But again, this could be one of those game things that they didn't think about or something. But seeing how they thought about the chip in those big uh, brutes, I don't know. I guess they, you, you might come across DLC or next Dark Tide game, which tells them that, okay, there was some rip or chaos, something problem there, right? Rip in the warp or whatever. But yeah, this is <laughs> this is kind of fucked up. I mean, the you know the chaos influence, like he said, gets a bit of corrupted zombie style. But full on demons like that, uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, they. I like how uh, GW took that biblical thing, where sometimes biblical thing goes like, uh, you know, the Satan's demon devil can, cannot just point blank exist in this world. They have to have some kind of anchor or somehow to some access to something, rip in the you know reality or something, some shit like that. I like that they took that and implemented into this one. Within the future, I don't remember there being a mention of it, so this that's just where my conclusion lies. However, I'm glad that Fat Shark showed restraint and didn't jerk us off too hard with how strong we are. The boss enemies in this game are often just like captains captains with plasma pistols and refractor field generators two granted extremely powerful pieces of equipment that often like company commanders in the guard will carry so it's absolutely in line that a strong ass captain who serves chaos with good ass gear can serve as the game's boss fight now some people ask would a single space marine work as a final boss one space marine like a final final boss and to that i say no. The tiniest maybe. If there was a space marine, it would be a death guard, most likely. Death guard are slow, but they're still marines. And if he is equipped with a bolter, then the damage he would dish out would be unrecoverable. He would take us all out pretty quick. Also, being in a square mile... Wait a minute, a singular space marine can take a horde of uh, Astra Militarum soldiers? Can, you, can they do that? And uh, we are special people, right? The four of us. The fanatic, uh, the psyker, uh, the, the brute, right? All this, we are kind of like a special, I mean, we're not just any average because we, all four of us are kicking everybody's ass. So it implied that we are we are the someone who shows promise or something with all the soldiers with us or whatever. So if it's just four of us, right? And we're going to ignore that, you know, there could be a soldier's army or whatever. But if we are just four of us against this space money, yeah, I think space money would kick their ass left and right. That's nothing, even if you're special. But against a horde of, you know, soldiers, I don't know. Isle of a Death Guard Marine often comes with an ungodly amount of disease and probably in-game debuffs with it too. If anything, the best boss fight would be hide and seek. The only thing that would give us a chance is the Ogren and the Psyker. Warp power could definitely do damage and the Ogren is still very, very strong. I suppose certain weapons like the Thunder Hammer and Plasma Gun would be pretty handy 
too, but it's still a little if I would be okay with it if it was something ridiculous, like a level five mission where you had to play through the mission, do a boss fight against him, he gets away, more mission, boss fight again, different weapon, let's say, gets away, then boss fight again, final boss fight, like a three stage boss fight. You know, you go mission, fight, mission, fight, mission, fight. I'm having an ogren moment, something like that. Like it needs to be really goddamn hard. It has to be a spectacle or else it loses its scaling purposes. But for now here, tough ass dude with a plasma pistol and a refractor shield, perfect. Exactly what I was hoping for. But at the end of the day, right, combining these things together, art direction, voice acting, music, and power scaling. Warhammer is an extremely hard medium to adapt properly. It takes a lot of the standard sci-fi conventions and outright says, no, do the opposite. Complete removal of tolerance, no AI whatsoever. It's taking what was a prosperous sci-fi universe and then giving it 10,000 years of degradation into ignorance and then make them proud of it. For all the difficulties. Yeah, I mean, seriously, that's why I love Warhammer so much because they didn't just took shit from like something like Tolkien's or Star Wars or whatever, right? They took things from real history. The real historical accurate things that they used and obviously change it in a way to implement into this one and use real psychology of uh, certain philosopher out tangled with certain like if uh, we go this route how would the world look if we go this route how would the world look they literally use that and just made this grim dark world with this is why i love this world because i've never come across something like this everything is somewhat influenced by some past uh, thing that comes right uh, whether it's like as a Star Wars, Tolkien's, right? It's like Cthulhu shit or whatever. Somebody just uses massively of that. This, this used real history and real philosophy in a way. I think Dark Tide gets a solid A on it. If there was a game to show someone and say, this is as close as I can get to explaining what Warhammer 40k is like, at least from the human point of view, it's this one. My hat is tipped to all the artists, designers, voice actors, and musicians that came together to make it possible, to make this world feel the way it does. Still plenty of hat tipping to the other devs too, but for this kind of thing, extra hat tipping, triple the tip. It could not have been easy, but I believe it has paid off. If you'd like to jump into it, it is in the description. Check it out. It's not a perfect game. Some things I will discuss more about in a future video, but it is still a damn fun one. And I have thoroughly enjoyed my time with it. T-shirt and jeans or sweater and khaki. Yeah. I mean, the game is out, right? People did told me I forgot that. Holy shit, game is out. Uh, I do have to check that out, apparently. But yeah, the <clears throat> game looks good. And I, I understand what it talks about, the scaling thing, right? It's the how the enemy... I mean, they could have just easily gone with something like, okay, uh, chaos is, you know, uh, captain, lieutenant, whatever, those big-ass things that Warhammer showed, right? Uh, War, Warhammer, uh, Total War Warhammer showed, right? Uh, it was a strategy game, so it worked here. But if they show here, like, scaling would be a problem. Like this four people are supposed to take down this gigantic chaos creature. Or something. That would be a bit too much, I guess. Right. So I, I'm glad how they're seen. Like these are not the space marine chapters fighting chaos. These are like, you know, inner hive city thing. Right. But Nurgal has corrupted people. It's great. Right. Well, if you like, make sure to subscribe. And I'll see you next time.